welcome back. Today, me and Bruce here are going to be doing a Corgi Q&A. So I took your questions from Instagram, and we're going to try to answer a bunch of those questions. Bruce here is so filthy, so I'm sorry he's not nice and clean for this video. But we were actually just irrigating at the farm, and Bruce has to run through the canal. Why are you such a dirty little mongrel, huh, Bruce? Good boy. So, we're gonna try to get this video filmed before they get their baths, so that's why they are pretty filthy. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because Bruce here would love it if you subscribed because we do make a lot of videos, videos including corgis, so uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as I suspected, Bruce is going to completely rely on me to hold him up during this whole process, I think. Good boy, Bruce. All right, first question is from uh, Morga, Morg, Morgarissa. That's, that's so hard to say. <laughs> How many corgis do you have? Uh, okay, so I have four corgis right now. I have Bruce, Rowan, Clark, and Luna. And what do they like to eat? <laughs> Everything, uh, but I think their favorite is probably chicken poop. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but corgis basically like to eat everything, even if it's not good for them. So we have to be really careful about what they put in their mouth. Marissa.arc. Hey, Megan. As much as my comment relates to corgis, it could relate to any long dog. I have a Dutch hound, and I'm so worried about her receiving spinal damage. The vet told me that they are long and short, and they are prone to spinal injuries. What is your experience with your corgis? Uh, yes, they can actually be prone to spinal injuries. You have to be careful. And actually, this kind of goes with another question that I was also going to answer. So I'm going to include it right here. Uh, Suzik, I'm not sure if this has already been asked, but is it a bad thing if corgis constantly jump off furniture? And if so, do you allow your corgis to jump on and off furniture? So. Uh, I don't like for my corgis to be jumping on and off furniture. In fact, I think I'm going to be getting stairs because it used to be that just Clark slept in the bed and now like all four sleep in the bed. Um, and I pick them up and put them on. But the two older ones, Luna and Clark, sometimes get too excited to wait for me and they'll jump off the bed. And so yes, to go back to the spinal question, yes, they are prone to spinal injuries. They are prone to spinal injuries and you shouldn't be letting them jump on and off of furniture. Of course, it does also depend on how high the furniture is. Um, but yeah, I don't really like them doing that. So I'm trying to prevent them from doing that. And I always pick them up and, you know, you put to put them on and off, but um, sometimes they're a little impatient. So I think probably getting stairs is going to help with that. Um, also, it does depend on the breeding. Since you have a rescue, you probably won't know too much about uh, the parents and the genetics and all of that. But like with my corgis, uh, we did testing and we made sure that both lines were healthy. So that's something that can help prevent that, prevents them from getting certain diseases and stuff that are back related. But of course there's still injury and that's still something that can happen. So we do try to be careful with our corgis. But honestly, the corgis are much tougher than most people make them out to be. And they are a herding dog after all. And uh, something, <laughs> how much do they shed? So I'm constantly told that corgis shed so much and that it's such a big deal. Personally, I don't really feel that way. Right now, my corgis are shedding quite a bit because it just got very hot all of a sudden. I think they're kind of blowing their coat out still. And of course, whenever they get pretty dirty, they just kind of shed more. Um, but really, I don't think that it's that bad. And maybe it's also because of their diet. Uh, I feed them really good food. They're on a raw diet and I just take good care of them. And that seems to help the coats a lot. I don't think it's as big a deal as everybody makes it out to be, but uh, usually when you ask corgi owners, they say that the dogs do shed a lot. Um, they don't shed as much as Caspian, so I don't know, it doesn't really seem like it's that much to me. Also, when I have gone to corgi meetups, I do have other people telling me, uh, well, what do you do because your dogs aren't shedding very much? And I really think that it is just diet related. Becky asks, asks uh, why do people still dock corgi tails? Would you ever do this? So the reason people started docking the tails, and this is just on the Pembroke breed. There's two types of corgis, which we'll get into in a minute. But um, Pembrokes have their tail docked. 
cardigans do not have their tail docked. Um, the reason people started doing it is because these are a herding breed. And they wanted to protect the tail from injury because uh, tail injury is really bad, super painful. So they didn't want the herding dogs to get hurt, which kind of makes sense. It <laughs> kind of also doesn't because there's plenty of breeds that do keep their tail and herd. But that was the original point of it. However, now the majority of Pembroke Corgis are lazy house dogs that do not work. Let's be honest about that. And they still dock the tail. And it's just for aesthetics. It's just because it's a breed standard and a group of snobby people called the AKC uh, say that that's what you do. And so that's what people do is they listen to that. And it's, it's total nonsense. Um, you don't need to cut the tail off of the corgi. Um, no, I would absolutely never do that. The only time I would um, consider docking a tail from a dog that I owned is if they had an injury or uh, I did see a dog that came into the clinic one time had to get the tail amputated because he was actually biting it off. It, it was pretty gross. The bone was exposed and all of that and that was a behavioral issue and I think that was related to breeding and the home he lived in. The dog was very hard to handle. It was actually a great Dane. Um, but yeah, that's not something I would ever do and it's ridiculous that people still do it. And people will be commenting down below like, oh well, my corgi hurts, blah blah blah. That's great and if you have a herding dog and you decide that that's what's best for you, you want to dock the tail, okay, that's, you know, justifiable. But these breeders that are sending dogs off to homes that have no cattle, no sheep, no animals to herd, they have no justification for it, but watch them try so hard to justify it. The only reason that they are doing it is because a group of snobby people is telling them to and people are very influenced by others. So here we go, we're getting into the Pembroke Cardigan. Uh, Berkey, Berkey? Berkey Jessica is a Pembroke Corgi a different breed than a Cardigan Corgi or are there just different color traits? So they are two different breeds. Um, two different breeds that have been recognized for the past about a hundred years. Previously to that, um, it, some people did consider them two different breeds. However, when they were being adopted into AKC and there was the dog shows and all of that, they were actually just corgis, all of them. And some had certain characteristics while others had different characteristics. And because of that, because the judges preferred certain characteristics over others, people felt that it was unfair and they broke them off into two separate groups. But the breed does have the same history, it has the same origin story, and um, they basically both came from the same original dogs. That's one thing to remember about purebred dogs is that all of them were created by people. Uh, so yes, it is two different breeds, the Pembroke Corgi and the Cardigan Corgi. Um, it's not just a color difference, however there are color differences and for example uh, in the Cardigan uh, breed there is Merle and Brindle which are you know really pretty colors that are not found in the Pembroke breed. Now however there are some people like myself that enjoy having the two breeds mixed in order to increase the gene pool and kind of go back to the Corgi roots really. Um, but I guess it, that could be kind of a whole video in itself, but to answer your question, yes, it is two different breeds. And Bruce here, in case you're wondering, he is 25% uh, cardigan and 75% Pembroke. So that's what he is. Bruce, you are getting heavy. I'm gonna give my wrist a break for a second. Sophia Kitty Saucerix. <laughs> Are they rather hyper or are they more chill than some other dogs you've owned? Oh, and congratulations on your kitten Rex. Okay, so uh, I think this has a lot to do with the owner because from what I've heard from other people and also what I've seen of other corgis that aren't mine, some of them are very hyper. Um, my corgis have never been hyper, but I, I train them a lot, I interact with them a lot, they're very active, and I think all of that is part of it. Um, would I consider them a hyper breed? Not really, but they are kind of a 
more high maintenance breed where you do need to be active with them and train them and all of that. But let's say compared to Huskies, no, they do not have near the energy that a Husky does. This is Rowan. This is Bruce's brother. Oh, you're so cute. Uh, Rowan here is actually a tri uh, brindle corgi. So he has brindle on his head, um, but his back is actually black. Okay, so next question is Holly Zhao 2879. How much is a purebred corgi? So corgis are expensive dogs. Um, they're usually over a thousand dollars. I think up to three thousand dollars would probably be um, like high for them. Uh, I'm sure that it can go over that, you know, depending on where you are. Uh, but here in America, in the Southwest, you're generally going to pay about $1,500 for a corgi. Um, I've seen them as low as $400, but that's definitely questionable. No testing. Um, none of that. Like, can you see the parents? I don't know. Um, so it really, you know, depends too. Uh, if you go with a good breeder, 1500 here in the Southwest is probably going to be an average for them. Uh, they are considered an expensive dog. And then also depending on the color and all of that, it can go up. Uh, Merles right now are definitely the most pricey. And why are you against tail docking? So the reason I'm against tail docking is because there is no humane way to do it. Um, the best way would probably be when the dogs are, you know, a day or two old and they put a rubber band around the tail. And <laughs> hello, Remy. It eventually falls off, it, you know, goes numb and falls off. So that would be the best way to do it. That would cause the least amount of discomfort to the dog. However, that's still not nice. And anyone who wants to tell me that it, it doesn't hurt them and that's that's fine, um, tie a rubber band around your pinky until it falls off and let me know how that feels. But until someone can tell me how that feels, then yeah, we're gonna go with the fact that having a body part go numb because you cut the blood off from it, that's not nice. Um, the other way to do it would be at a vet's office. Um, I've seen this done um, to different dogs. I've seen it done to dogs that are, you know, two days old all the way up to six months. Um, puppies that are very small, you know, before eight weeks, uh, when they cut the tail off, you can't really put them under anesthesia. You can't really numb the area. They're just too little. Um, or, or if you can at that age, I've never seen it done personally. They scream the entire time. Like they just scream through the process because they're cutting the tail off. And then, like I said, I've also seen it done to dogs that are older. So around um, six months of age. And those dogs are able to be put under anesthesia and it's a surgery and um, it's stitched up and everything. Uh, I guess kind of a more normal surgery. That's still painful. Those dogs wake up in pain. They're missing their tail. By that point, the dog's gotten used to having a tail. And so they keep looking behind them kind of like, oh my gosh, what happened? And it hurts. And it's just, so the justifiable reason for that is, oh, I just didn't like the way that that looked. To basically go and be like, oh, this, we don't need this. Yeah, this has got to go. I mean, why were you even born with this? So yes, that would be why I'm against tail docking because there's no justifiable reason for it. You don't just get an animal and then be like, oh, well, this part's gotta go. We gotta cut off these. Oh, these ears? Nah. All right, next. I don't know how to pronounce that, cat lover. How much did it take you to potty train them? Uh, so actually, my dogs were pretty easy to potty train. Um, of the four corgis I have, and uh, even Daisy, Daisy wasn't too bad to potty train. The worst was Luna. For some reason, she's difficult to train. Uh, Clark was easy. The boy puppies were super easy, especially since Jaime helped me so much with the um, puppies that we had. And Daisy was a little bit more difficult, but she was potty trained um, before she passed away. Um, and so the two boys, just super easy to potty train. But um, I raised them from when they were born because, you know, Luna is their mom uh, and they're the corgis that I bred. And so what I did with the litter is I trained all of them to go on puppy pads. And by the time they were eight weeks old and going off to their other families, 
they were potty trained to go on puppy pads. And from there, it just makes dogs easier to train. Uh, so that's something you want to ask your breeder if they're using puppy pads. I've heard a lot that it just is an easier process if that's how they're started out with them um, since they're with the breeder. Now with Daisy, I did some crate training with Daisy. Um, however, the boys actually slept with us in bed and they were just they were just good about it. I don't even know what to say um, about, you know, for people who ask how to potty train them. Crate training is always a method that I say go to, but the boys, we didn't crate train them because um, Rowan has very bad anxiety going into a crate. I don't know why, obviously he's never <laughs> had any bad experiences, but the second we tried the crate with him, it didn't go well. And so we decided to just not have him in the crate at all. Um, Bruce was a little bit in the crate, um, but not really too much. Uh, they were just such good puppies. But one thing is, is that you have to be super consistent. You have to take them out a lot. You have to um, schedule feeding, watering, all of that. So that's, that's a huge part of potty training. Happy little rat. What's the thing you like the most about corgis? And is there anything you don't like about them? Um, I think the thing that I like the most about corgis is that they're they're so funny. They're comical. They have facial expressions and I just love that. I love how they have facial expressions and to me it's just different than any other breed of dog. Um, that's probably one of my favorite things about them. One of the other favorite things about them is that when they run, they leave a cloud of dust. It's so funny because their their little legs are so short. so. They seem like they're going super fast and it's not really that fast and they just kick up so much dirt like that's all they're accomplishing and because their legs are so small if you look at them run from far away uh rowan especially he looks like the pillsbury um little thing because he looks like he doesn't have knees like they don't bend like it just is like true 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 <laughs> so it's really funny to me I think the thing that i like the least about corgis is their obsession with food it does get a little bit annoying um, I think that they're more obsessed with food than certain breeds, certainly more than Caspian. Um, but there's just some breeds like Labs and stuff like that that are really obsessed with food and Corgis is, they're one of them. I've always loved Corgis but I wanted to know are there any particular health issues that they can be susceptible to? I should be aware of before looking to try to adopt one in the future. And is there a certain breed of corgi that's healthier than another? Okay, so to answer the first question, yes, there are a couple of different things that corgis are susceptible to. Uh, DM, which is having to do with their spine, uh, hip dysplasia, and a few others that I can't remember the exact names of, but are having to do with their spine. So that's all something that you want to think about. And that's why it's important to get dogs that have been tested. But talking about getting dogs that have been tested and your question about is there a healthier breed. This is a, kind of more of a personal opinion, uh, something that is a little bit based on research. It's becoming a more popular idea, you know, to have a mixed breed dog, that that is healthier than a purebred. So a cross between Cardigans and Pembrokes, your, your American Corgis, they are probably going to be healthier than a purebred Pembroke or purebred Cardigan. And I did write about this in my blog when I was saying why I bred my Corgis. So something you want to think about is did the breeder health test them? That's a really good step. However, there has been articles coming out saying that health testing the dogs that are purebred is a good intention, but it actually leads to more issues because then you breed you breed this dog with this dog because they're both clear of those certain you know illnesses and diseases that you're watching out for. Um, but because you took those two, you're limiting the gene pool. So you have to think, okay, a purebred dog already has a limited gene pool, and then you start only breeding certain ones due to testing. That narrows down the gene pool even more. So like people like me, what I did was I got a dog that was, you know, health tested, that was a purebred, and then uh, Clark, who's 50% cardigan and 50% uh, Pembroke, who's health tested and healthy, coming from, you know, different lines, and bred those two dogs together. And that created dogs that were health tested, that were going to have good, healthy puppies, but also had a gene pool that was bigger than you know even your purebred dogs and so genes are really important i mean 
And you can, if you don't believe me, you can look into human inbreeding and that never goes well. So uh, yeah, that's something to consider if you're thinking about getting a corgi. Uh, think about health testing, think about mixes. All those things can definitely lead to healthier dogs. Noah's uh, 102. Are they an easier breed of dog to breed? Uh, so this is um, something that is definitely a no, 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 they're not. Um, when I decided to breed my corgis, I had to have the option of getting my dog a C-section if it came to that. Now that's not something I wanted to do. Some people do, you know, just jump into that and they get the C-section on the due date. Um, but I really wanted her to try to have a natural birth. Um, but we were on the phone with the vet all night. She um, had her puppies during the night because, <laughs> you know, they don't like to do anything convenient. And we had to, you know, make sure that everything was okay and that it was going well. Corgis are not easy to breed. It's so common for them to have a puppy that gets stuck while they're trying to give birth, um, to need a C-section. I, I believe that um, from what I read, it was just like the shape of their bodies uh, being so long and so short as well. Um, so no, they're not an easy dog to breed and you need to have a lot of money going into it. And just remember, like I expected a litter of like four puppies and she had 10. So that also meant that it was a lot more, you know, stuff to buy, more food, more toys, more puppy pads, all of that. So if you do think about breeding corgis, don't think you're going to get rich from it. Um, Part of the reason these dogs do cost so much money is because it is hard to breed them and to offer good healthy dogs. What's the average weight for a corgi? Do they get along with other dogs? Um, it's just like any breed, they can get along with other dogs, but it's all part of training, it's all part of proper introduction, all of that. What's the average weight for them? Uh, well, for my corgis, they're a little bit smaller. Um, they're about 20 pounds full grown. Some corgis can go up to 30. Um, but you want to make sure, though, that they're not overweight. And it, how much they weigh isn't really too important. It's what they look like here. They need to have a waist. If your corgi doesn't have a waist, it's overweight and it, it doesn't matter you know how much it weighs you need to have a nice lean body that's what's important i don't really think too much about what they weigh i think about how they look because a corgi can be healthy at 30 pounds but then it can also be very very overweight at 30 pounds leah 305 do you have any advice for new corgi owners i think my biggest piece of advice for new corgi owners is don't think that this is a lap dog or you know a small dog this is a herding dog. They were bred to herd cattle, sheep, all of that. They're a high energy dog. They like working. So don't think you're going to get a small dog like um, a Shih Tzu or something like that. Just because they're low to the ground doesn't mean that they are a small breed. Um, these guys are working dogs and they have short legs in order to work cattle and not you know, get hit by cattle. Uh, that's one of the perks of them as a herding dog. So just be aware that they are a large breed. Um, and that, that's kind of what I've seen also from other people is I heard someone tell me one time that they thought their Corgi was a small breed so that's how they treated it and that they didn't do enough training and all of that and the dog did have behavioral issues and then they had to fix that. So go into it realizing how much work they are and that they are gonna need a lot of training. What's your favorite coat color that Corgis come in? My favorite coat color is um, the Blue Merle. Um, it's actually the tan point Blue Merle that Daisy was. That's my favorite one. Um, after the Blue Merle, it would probably be the red. Um, I love uh, Bruce's red. He's pretty much lost all his Merle spots, but that's okay. I really like the red color. And he has these beautiful blue eyes, so that's wonderful. Um, since I've had the puppies though, Brindle has definitely gone up in my list of favorites. At first I didn't really like it, but it really grew on me. Honestly, I love every color that corgis come in. Thanks so much for watching this video about corgis. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I do make a lot of animal videos and I have tons of corgi videos. And you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye!